Kicking off 2022 by looking at two very cool different coins that have things that are not perfect about them, but at the same time, they are a little bit different and so worthy of talking about here on In Focus Friday. Everybody, Backyard Bullion here, and a very warm welcome to you all joining me for this week's edition of In Focus Friday, the show where we take a good close look at cool things made of silver or gold. And this week we're doing a double header of two coins sent to me by Europa Bullion, who are very generously sponsoring In Focus Friday at the moment. And if you've not heard of them before, there's a link down in the description to their website where you can see all of their offerings, including both of these very, very cool coins that we're going to have a look at here today. So please feel free to check them out. And if you're in the UK, check out Great British Bullion on the Silver Forum, who is their trading partner for UK customers, and they can supply pretty much everything that they've got as well. So first up, let's have a good close look at this starfish coin. It's a very elegant, very pretty one that looks exceptionally good when zoomed in on my nice new camera. And I think you'll understand why it's quite so pretty when you see it right now. Now, made by the Sunshine Mint, uh, who are very, very synonymous with high quality coins. This is wonderful. It's very elegant, very highly detailed, perhaps a little bit too symmetrical as, uh, you know, for anatomy's sake. But nevertheless, this starfish is very pretty and very elegant. And I do like the way that they've put the word of Cook Islands. You can see, see their silver star, fine silver, four nines, one ounce. One dollar all the way round the starfish's limbs. Very, very cool, very unique, very different. And it's nice to see something that's a little bit different out there on the market because there are a plethora now of different offerings for various silver coins, um, you know, good, bad, ugly. And I think this is very much in that good category. It's a very elegant one. I like the netting in the background, although it does spark some kind of, um, you know, sort of eco. Um, what's the word, uh, you know, sort of ocean friendly, uh, you know, mantra there for me to really get behind. But um, yeah, hopefully not too many of these starfish are caught up in those nets. But regardless, it's a very unique, very interesting design choice. Unlimited mintage as far as I can see, uh, although with these things, it often ends up not necessarily being hundreds of thousands. You're probably looking at close to 50,000, I would think, as a average mintage of past examples, but I don't have any specific mintage figures. So if anybody does know the exact mintage of these, then let me know. Uh, on the other side of the coin, we have good old Queenie and we've got Ian Rank Broadley's portrait, which is, in my opinion, the, one of the superior portraits at the moment for this coin. Uh, very elegant indeed, again, with this webbed background there. Uh, it's nice to see the theme you know, transported through onto the other side of the coin. Often you'll just have real easy blanks with just the queen's head on there. And it's nice to see all of these coins with those continuation of designs. But it's a really elegant, really nice coin. The quality is pretty good. I mean, you, you may have spotted on the other side here, there is this sort of little scuffing on the queen's cheek there. Now, whether that's come as a kind of production flaw or a bit of a handling error, I don't know. It's not from myself. That was there when I've taken the lid of the capsule off. I don't really want to go too much more and investigate it, but that's, you know, sometimes that happens on these kind of coins. It's uh, part and parcel of, sadly, these, these sort of issuings, but it is still elegant, it is still great, and I think if you get one that is a really nice quality, it can sit there as this sort of slightly higher premium level coin. It's not certainly a cheap piece of bullion. A lot of these will go for, uh, you know, I'm looking on the Europe, uh, Europa Bullions website right now and you're looking at around the 30 euros mark for them. So you are looking at a premium item for sure, but it's not necessarily, of course, as premium as a proof coin. And I think it will have that kind of mainstay of collectability and interest for the future. Certainly it's a very elegant coin and there is a market for them. So there we have the Silver Star, the Starfish from Sunshine Mint, very good indeed. Now we are staying on the nautical theme as we are now moving to uh, one of the Pop Joyments coins, the Cutty Sark. Now, this is one I've not really been able to find a whole host of information on. What I have found is that it should, I think, be uh, 10,000 mintage. And I think this is the reverse frosted, uh, well not proofs, reverse frosted silver bullion coins. Um, now it's, Got a, again, a little bit of a pot potential production issue here. I have always found the Pop Joyments products to be pretty good, but not 
setting the world on fire. And I think that's what I would describe this coin as. Certainly when you compare it with some of the other nautical themed uh, coins that are out there, the random nautical series brings immediately to mind and potentially even like the, the Cook Islands uh, nautical coins as well. Uh, this one does ne doesn't necessarily set my heart on fire with the desire and amazement. Uh, we've got here uh, the Queen's portrait that's been used countless times by the um, by the Pop Joy Mint, and it's from Indian Ocean Territory. Um, now, this is one of the, I think, slight downfalls of sort of the Pop Joy Mint's product lines is that they don't necessarily always have, they they seem to always have these kind of in you know random Indian Ocean islands or Trish, uh, Tristan de Cahuna in the middle of the Atlantic. Um, you know, it doesn't necessarily really fit, I think, with the sort of modern coin area. Now, I don't really want to be overtly negative towards the Pop Joy Mint. They're a business, they're making coins, they're selling coins, that's absolutely fine. And if people want to buy them, that's absolutely fine as well. But uh, at the end of the day, I do think that there are potentially better offerings out there for um, for sort of bullion grade nautical themed silver. It's an elegant coin, it's nice. I'd give it a solid sort of five or six out of 10 for its design. But I think this reverse frosted proof, um, again, with, with all of these kind of shiny elements that you get on here, it's very pretty. There's lots of light playing off it, but a lot of the detail can sometimes be missed on the sort of shinier parts of the ship. And I have found in previous coins that when you have this, when you get it right, like the contrast here with the, uh, with the starfish, I think you can definitely see the quality issues, um, you know, really shining on this potential coin here, the Cutty Sark. Um, and when you have a frosted finish on the actual element of the design like the ship, I do think that that's potentially an even better design option. So this being a reverse frosted is what I'm reading on Pobjoy's website. Um, I think that that would have potentially been better. I think, I think like when you look on this side here, this is actually a better side for me, the example here of the queen. The frosted finish on the queen herself, you actually see a lot more of the detail. You see a lot more of those intricate moments of the hair, of the crown, of the, you know, sort of the, the furrowed eyebrows here. And I think that's more in in keeping with kind of a better design. Frosted finish is always better in my opinion. Now this portrait as well, I'm not a massive fan of. I don't think it even looks like the queen to be quite honest. Um, but you know, that's that's my own volition. That's my own thoughts on the design. I'd give it, a, as I said, a solid sort of five out of 10. I'm not entirely convinced that it's the best coin in the world, but at the same time, it's not the worst coin in the world for sure. So if you are interested in them, then there are options for you to buy on Europa Bullion. But I, you know, beauty's in the eye of the beholder. I'd love to know what you think of these two coins. So please feel free to comment down below with your thoughts and a score out of 10, because I always enjoy it when I hear uh, people's scores for various coins. Next week, we have got something incredible, something very special, very, very, very cool. Uh, I can't give you a sneak peek right now because we're still still working out all of the intricate uh, logistics of it, but it is arriving soon and it is going to be incredible and I'm super excited. Um, so stick around for next week if you've not hit that subscribe button and that's the best way to keep on, in the loop uh, on what's coming up. And uh, we'll see you next time. So a big thank you once again to Europa Bullion for sending me these two coins to show for you all. And as always, please make sure that you like, share, comment, and subscribe for more.